case anyone wants to see the finished product. I'm gonna finish film the finished product of the uh, of this guy here from yesterday's video. Came out pretty good, blended smooth, probably a lot better than the other side. Cause this side's factory. I think our side looks a lot better. Yeah, I just gotta swap that out. This one here I'd swap out too, just put this one back in. Cause then they match at least and Well, nothing much going on. So we're gonna call it for the day. I'm gonna go ship out something. I forgot to grab my box. But transmission's finally sold. I got the plastic over top of it, so we're just gonna set it down at the bottom of the driveway. Call it the day. I gotta go grab the box to go ship. So I can go ship the uh those grab handles all right transmission has been dropped i know it sucks but that's where he told me to put it and unfortunately it's really heavy so i can't exactly just put it wherever um i can't pick it up and put it somewhere so i had to slide through all the snow and whatnot not a big deal um two-wheel drive truck just seems to be doing just fine so we're gonna go use this box here and ship out some stuff Okay, so while we're about to drive away, let's just, let's just do some spinny boys. Oh! <laughs> oh man, that was bad. I let off and it just kept going side. Woo! <laughs> Oh man, that was that was a little scary. That was a little scary, I'm not gonna lie. But the key is to not touch your brakes. Don't touch your brakes and you'll be fine. You guys wanna know how a two-wheel drive truck does in the snow? I think it does all right. Oh! <laughs> 30 pounds of boost to the snow. Yeah, it looks, it's shit today. I'm telling you what, it is shit today. Can't be too sketchy around these corners, but uh, yeah, it's definitely laying. I'm having to sit in the other lane. Let's see, let's, let's let her eat again. Whoo! That's scary, that's scary, whatever. Looks like it was just the road that I was going down. Um, yeah, it's not super bad right here. So, it's a little wet. It's 32 degrees, so I definitely got to watch for some ice. All right, guys, so we just got a bunch of stuff done this morning. Basically, uh, it's another day. Uh, another day. You guys kind of got to see what I was, what we had going on yesterday. Not really all that much. I decided to go home and just sit on the computer, go through the emails, and just a bunch of other stuff. So, today I am going. Uh, we finally sold the axle. That guy's on his way. So, I sold it for 800 bucks. We have a radio doing today. I got 200 bucks for that. And then I need uh, to also diagnose an air pump on a truck with air suspension. So we're doing all that today. Basically, here's the game plan. I posted up on Instagram, right? We're searching for a freight trailer, something that's a flatbed. Using my trailer for freight does not make sense. Uh, I will at some point get the uh, the Kaufman leased out if the car prices don't come up. I've called on four loads today from a Certus. Uh, they are definitely a pain to deal with, but we are trying the best that we can do to get them. Uh, we found four loads, 950, all going from the same area to Maryland, and that's 3,800 bucks. They can all be done in a day, so four days of work, 3,800 bucks for four days worth of work. If we get it, we're fighting on that, um, so that'll be great. There are still some few and far between good paying loads. But basically what we're gonna do is, I've put a post out, I will do any mechanic work in the Pennsylvania area. It's 90 bucks an hour at the shop. If you need anything, more than enough videos to show you that I can back my work up. So, with that being said, let's get out to the shop. I gotta go pick my truck up, and then we have to break into a vehicle for some reason and get to work. Wish I had a way to demonstrate this, but it's running, the keys are locked in the ignition. And the lock button was hit. So I got my lock kit. Let's see if I can't see if I can't put you guys somewhere.
Oh, I got into it. That's a service that used to charge 65 to 85 bucks to do. We're gonna pull this dash. There is a crack before I start doing this. I just want to notify that. So, a little bit of a dash repair right there. So I gotta get this pulled out. The wiring is done. This radio is probably on its last leg, but you know, we'll get it. These just pull out. So hopefully it should be super easy. Dash is off. Just need one bolt there, one bolt there. All right, here's what we got. This wasn't hooked up. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna assume this had an amplifier in it at some point, but not anymore. But there's the two wires. This was just chilling. That's a ground. So let me get that swapped. All right, so here is where our test fit came out. You can see that is tight, solid. So that one can get cut off, and then any of these nubs on the side can also come off. I just needed to make sure that everything was good. There is a gap underneath, and then over top, you guys can see how that works. So here's the old radio. All they did for brackets was right there and there. So we'll get that pulled out, and then we will start working our way through getting all the wiring plugged in. All right, so ignore the beeping for a second. Let's say we'll turn it on. See, no, nothing. So we have 1041 playing. We're just going to play the commercials. So, what I do is I go through the uh, general, I think it was. No. So, it's sound somewhere on here. I don't know how. There we go. Sound. So, what I do is I go through the balance and I'll put it on the left. And he told me that none of the right speakers work. So, that is fair. So we did that. So we know that the left, both speakers play. And then we go to fader. And then we do fade front. Front works. That one does not. We'll do fade to the rear. No fronts are playing. Obviously that side's broken, but the back one plays. So, and generally what I'll do is I'll, as well, like I'll leave it on rear. And then I will also go from, so we'll go from rear and then we'll do right rear, left rear, and vice versa. These, this stupid, stupid commercial platinum, these guys. So you get the point though. So everything works, display, we got the time set, general. I do, I am trying to find out how to put the time on here. Um, clock adjustment, beep off, auto off. So everything works, so cool. There you go. Now the next thing we need to figure out is the little air. He has an airlift system on here. So we need to figure that out next. And he used to have a little thing here, but I think, there you go. It looks like he only has one side actually, and that's kind of neat. You're supposed to be able to hit that and it go up, but it's not working. So let's figure that out next. All right, so this is the truck in question. They just went through and like did a full paint job on it. So paint looks pretty decent. Still working on the undercoating and whatnot, but sorry about the noise body work came out pretty good Jay did this one so that's the truck radio is in it he was gonna put it for sale you guys can see here 
He pulls a camper with it. So here's the airbags. All right, well, compressor works. So that tells me he probably has a wiring issue somewhere. But where? All right, so here's what we found out, okay? So the wiring on the air compressor, here's the air compressor, it goes to a ground. By the way, I didn't do this wiring, so don't judge on any of this. Um, unless, yeah, I didn't do it. So you got a power wire here. That power wire runs to this. Then it splits off into three here to a compressor switch two wires then go all the way up one goes in here to the battery he left this wire in here which i'm going to take out and then replaced this wire here and then this wire here was just chilling but there's no fuse in it and it's not connected to anything so i have no idea um so what I have found is what I think I have found is dirty, dirty connections. So the connector over here, I pulled it off, I cleaned it up, I put it back on and I re-taped it to his specifications. And this took a little while to figure out because his, the wiring is all over the place. If I could redo it myself, that would be great. But here is, hit the button. Oh, and it stopped working again. For some reason, it stopped working again. Unless it just needs to sit for a while. I don't know. Draining air out. I don't know. What? It was working. I'm assuming he, there's a dirty connector somewhere. Uh, that... So he only has... He has it teed, I guess. Let's get it back down to drained. I have no idea. No idea. But when I was wiggling the power wire, if I wiggle this wire, like for some reason, if I wiggle this wire, it was working. We verified the pump does work though. So somewhere, in the wiring, there is an issue. So I have no idea. No idea, but radio is done. Um, rear end for this is sold. I'll go take a shot maybe later. But compressor works perfectly fine. Now we gotta start digging into some wiring. All right, so first things first. Ground went through and cleared away every piece of there was paint on there and the bottom ground was kind of corroded so like even though it might have made somewhat of a decent connection on the top it wasn't on the bottom so we also went with a bigger uh screw because there is more of a surface area on that as well and the other one was only like halfway connected so let's see if it was that ground because that's the only ground in the system so let's see nope Still nothing, cool. So we know that it is not a ground and we have this connection fixed here. I wish that I, I could charge a lot more for what I'm doing because I would love to just redo this whole system and redo it correctly. But the weird thing is knowing that it worked intermittently with the button in there tells me that nothing is wrong with anything other than an intermittent connection. So, there could be a connection inside of here that's working sometimes. There could be a connection inside of here. Um, there could be corroded wires somewhere. There could be a, a lot of different factors other than like the hard parts failing. But it's it's an intermittent connection, so it's, it's definitely weird. These are not fun to deal with. They are a fight. I can see where his wire goes over into the cab right there. You can see it wiggling. Right there is that's where the airline goes in. So like I said, trying to diagnose this rat's nest of a wire harness, but I'm not allowed to spend the time to rebuild it because it doesn't pay and just trying to 
do someone a favor on this one. I charged for the radio, but this is, I'm probably just going to let him, let him go. Other than, I'll let him know that it's definitely going to be time consuming though. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like any of this at all whatsoever. Like, I feel like I could do this a lot nicer. All right, next step, I decided to pull the electrical tape off of this connector and check it out. And look at that, there is corrosion in there. So, look at that, there's corrosion in there. So obviously, like I said, you know, not getting paid to replace stuff. What I'm gonna do is I pulled that out and I'm gonna clean that, but I wonder if it works because I pulled that out and swapped the connection. Don't hit, don't hit, don't hit, don't hit, don't hit. So, dude, talk about clearance. Let's see if, if it works. It does not. That doesn't even do it. But not gonna stop me from cleaning that connection because that's what I feel like should be done. Throw some dielectric grease in there. That's a bit much, that's a little crazy. So we'll get that cleaned up and we'll go from there. All right, so cleaned all of that stuff, all the bullshit out. And hopefully at this point, we shouldn't have any more issues with this rotting away, but we're at the point now where, you know, there's a bunch of mystery stuff down in here. I really don't know. Um, I'm gonna start unraveling this electrical tape and seeing what I find under there to make sure all the connections are good. And under here, um, this one isn't a big deal. This just tells me the pressure. Um, and that is actually not part of the system because there's no leveling valves or anything. So this just tells I believe that just tells the gauge up there what it is, but I could be wrong. Um, I may check it out as well, but we shall see. So let's start tearing apart some of this stuff and seeing what we find underneath. I have found a thing. You guys see it right about there. Looks like it has pulled out of that connector there. So I'm gonna push it back in, see if it works. If it does, I'm gonna redo all these connections. If it doesn't, I'm still gonna redo all these connections. All right. Found it, um, that's what it was, that connection there. I plugged it back in, bada bing, bada boom. Let's not hit the bodywork. Check this out. There we go, cool. So we have figured it out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the soldering iron over, resolder all of that. Um, knowing, yeah, I'm gonna redo that connection as well because it looks like just does not look very, very good. All right, we got everything taken care of. Like I said, I would love to redo this and do it nicely, but he isn't super worried about it. So, look at that. We have some pumpage. Let's see. 15 pounds was about what he had it at. Um, might be a little excessive, but we do have air pressure. Look at that. There is air in the bags. He took really good care of this truck, but unfortunately, a little bit of overspray. Um, I gotta put that cover back on, so not a big deal. I cut that wire there. I don't know what he was using it for, but it is done. It is all taken care of. And if it was up to me and I wanted to charge him, I would love to like redo this fuse box you know, make some nice grommets for everything. Just there's a lot of stuff you can do, like between getting paid for something and just doing something as a favor, you can do a lot better work when you charge. But at the same time, I will say he's done me some, some favors in the past, which is why I don't feel bad helping. And doing what I can do you know I'm not gonna make it I'm not gonna get it perfect but I'm gonna make it work so that what I just repaired is not gonna be the next thing to fail so and that's not that wires not hooked up so I don't know what he's got dealing with that but everything taken care of so this hood closed oh man that thing is tight there we go cool now we have a working Working truck. Just glad I could help him out. Over here doing some body work on this thing. This is that truck. I believe this is the one that uh, two trucks put.
put into one. He bought two trucks and one had a bad cab and frame. The other one had a bad bed and put them all together and works out. So he's learning his body work on it, doing a lot better than I can. So I will, uh, I'll end up paying him to do the body work on my truck. Yes. There are people saying that I am never going to get this thing painted. I understand why you're saying that, but this truck is 100% getting painted in bodywork, the whole thing. And it's going to be a lot cheaper because I think I can get this whole thing painted for literally under 200 bucks for supply. So get some nice paint, get the guns. He's, we've got a paint booth in here and everything. So we are going to be getting this thing taken care of and painted at some point. He's doing all the filler holes for me, so he's going to do the bondo and everything, fill all this stuff in and whatnot. Um, I was told that this stuff would not last which I have discovered to be false. Um, it definitely lasts very nicely. I've driven down to, you know, Florida and back many, many, many times, and none of this stuff, even this here, hasn't pushed through. I think on this side, this was the better side, yeah. So none of it pushed through. And I even sanded it down and tried to give it a chance to push through, but whatever. Now, I do have some questions for you guys because I got asked by a few people now, what am I putting the stack on? The stack is coming. I just wanted to wait till the YouTube ad, ad revenue was back up because around like October to December, ad revenue peaks. It always does that. They always pay more. But then come January, the end of the end of December, uh, March, February, like ad revenue kind of drops a little bit. So I feel like I want I want to do a really good video on it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move this tank back about six inches. So it's gonna sit about here. I need to get a mount for the stack. We have a valve, so a valve that'll allow me to go up and a valve that'll let me go back to this here. Now my question is, do we leave the exhaust sticking out the back? And the only reason that sticks out so far is because I literally cannot push it in any further. Like it, it's just, I've tried, I've taken the bolt out of it. You can see like I've split the bolt here and tried. So two things, do we keep the out the back or do we axle dump it? so that it looks like the stack is coming out. How do, how, what do you guys think? Give me some opinions there. Um, another thing is I've gotten a few people that are kind of upset that I'm kind of like shying away from hot shot a little bit and trying to move back into the mechanic side. And I just want to let people know I'm not quitting. Um, no, by no means. I'm absolutely pushing through uh, these times. Yes, fuel $6 a gallon. No, it does not make sense for me to run these cheap loads until everybody stands up and demands more pay, I cannot run. I did call on four loads today from Assertus. We are gonna try to book those. Um, if I can, great, we'll have some hotshot content for you guys. If not, I'm just gonna do shop work. We're charging 90 bucks an hour, and it's, I, you know, the gross number is less, but the net is about the same, if not more. So like, if I did a $4,000 week with these fuel prices, Oh man, I don't even want to think about how little like I would make from that. Like I don't even think I can do a $4,000 week anymore running five days. So that's just something to consider. Um, you got to do what makes sense. Everybody's got a way of getting through this. Uh, I have heard some people, I had one guy tell me, and I did this before, um, he actually parked the truck, just pays the insurance, and then went and got a warehouse job. And like warehousing paying very good. Like it's like 28 bucks an hour is what I was working for when I did warehousing last year. Um, and it was great because I was making like 56 bucks an hour on, on Sundays and 43 bucks an hour, anything over eight hours in a shift. It was great. So I thought about it, but at the same time, it's like, I want to keep making content for you guys. So stack is coming. That will happen. I do need to find, I do need to get it powder coated. And I'll take your guys' advice on this. Do we keep this or do we do a axle dump? So... I, I'm kind of leaning more towards the axle dump because it would be weird seeing this and this, but I don't know. Maybe it'll just bother people more. And also, I'm probably going to get rid of the bumper at some point. I've made up my mind. I'm tired of the bumper. Probably just going to go ahead and get a roll pan at some point because I know that's going to bother a lot of people as well considering we have the big bumper up front. And then the big wheels are going to bother people. I, I, I really don't know why this is something that bothers people but it's just one of those things it's like just enjoy your life look at this look at this mirror i'm sure that'll bother people too i don't know um chevy mirrors they'll be coming but i gotta spend as little money as possible right now 
because of the everything that's going on. So just being super stingy and being smart with the money that I do have. I uh, just made like 900 bucks today. So I'm gonna go deposit all of that. And then I'm gonna go spend some money on Shiba Inu because why not? Because I like to gamble. So I'm really liking the new toolbox because I was able to uh, completely just eliminate the toolbox back here. Minus this, uh, I'll probably end up putting it behind the seat now. But everything fits into this small box. And these things get a lot of shit. Like I used to have one that was the big version of this. And I hated how big it was, but it was very durable. But I come over here, everything fits in there. You know, it's not perfect by any means, but it all fits. So it's bungeed back. It's going, it's all good. It's not going anywhere. Um, at some point, I will pull this back a little bit. Um, otherwise, I do like the placement of all of this stuff. So everything is good. I can see the fifth wheel from the back. I probably won't be able to see the fifth wheel when we move it back to put the sack in, but not going to bother me. Fire extinguisher, and that's it. I've got my lunch. So I'll have to find a spot to put my lunch box at some point, but I'll probably just keep that in the cab. So I'm going to eat my dinner, and we'll get out of here. Well, I had a box to keep my oil leaks from going anywhere, so how many oil leaks do I have after putting that box under it? Still plenty, unfortunately. I hate how much oil that engine leaks, and... I think it's leaking from the rear main now as well, but it's more like a uh, an actual, not even a leak, not even a leak anymore. It's more like it's just draining from the rear seal as well. So it's the front rear, the front main, the rear main, just a bunch of different leaks. It's annoying at this point. Um, probably just gonna go and get another engine at some point and then re-gasket that one, and then re-gasket this one at some point, or sell it, I don't know, I might I might end up selling this motor for like 1500 bucks. But that'll be a little bit down the road, obviously, like not right now, but gotta go and do the DOT inspection. Um, let me know how correct this is. Somebody said that the reason, I don't see too many DOT inspections on PA vehicles, does the PA state inspection override the DOT inspection? Someone mentioned that and then someone backed it up. How true is that? All right, rear axle is sold and gone. That leaves transfer case, drive shaft, bumper, dash is sold. Cool. So let's go deposit some money and uh, get out of here. Oh, sorry. Let's go deposit some money and get out of here because be nice go buy me some Sheba while it's down so if you leave the truck running even with the key off the lights will turn off after two minutes Dodges do that to prevent the batteries from dying but it's nice that I can take the key out oh I forgot to you know would have helped if I would have actually locked it but let's see Oh, helps to put the key back in it as well. Look at that, all the lights turn on. Now it is weird when I do that, because I do that all the time for like anti-theft. Like I can leave the truck running, but I can turn the key off. So the weird thing that I have found, the weird thing that I have found is that for the first like five or so minutes, the fuel gauge will go to zero and stay empty. But that's the only ill effect I've really found 